Good, Good morning. morning. It is Saturday morning, April 3rd, and today we're talking about the absolute gospel out of John chapter 14, verse 6, where it says, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes unto the Father but through me, John 14, 6. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for such a beautiful day. We thank you, Lord, for your love for us, for your forgiveness. We thank you for saving us. We ask that you be with us and help us to share you with others. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, talking about the absolute gospel, it says, In a world where we are exhausted with choices and options, we can rest easy that when it comes to eternity, there's only one option, Jesus. We don't have to figure it all out ourselves. The gospel is based on absolute truth. Jesus said he is the way the truth, and the life, the only way to God. Now, our task is to take that absolute truth to the, our world. Many people believe there are numerous ways to God. In fact, our culture often confuses tolerance with endorsement and dismisses the idea of absolute truth. That's why proclaiming Jesus' absolute message in this world can both be a challenge and an opportunity. Always, People around the globe are searching for truth, meaning, significance, security, and unconditional love. Jesus is the source of all that and more. And when people can see that faith in Jesus makes a difference in our lives, they are open to hearing about him. As Christians, we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in many ways, both speaking and acting. To be effective, let your heart rest in certainty of what you believe and be ready to present the unvarnished truth there is only one way to God, and that is through Jesus, who welcomes all to come to him. Jesus, help me always be ready to share your absolute gospel truth. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. You know, when the kids were little, we, um, we listened to Adventures in Odyssey. And if, yep. if you want to teach your kids from the very beginning what <clears throat> the absolute truth is, it's a great way to do it. They have a, a whole series on absolutes. Yep. Today, there's so many, con, there's so much confusion as to what the truth is, what the absolute truth is. You know, it might be true because someone says it's true, but that doesn't make it true, right? <laughs> <clears throat> so I think, you know, it's, it's an important thing. This world is so confusing because there's so much out there that is not absolute truth. Amen. Amen. Well, very, very simple <clears throat> message today. Not always easily swallowed today in our world because of so many thinking that there are many roads to God. Bottom line is this, and we know as we celebrate even this Easter season right now, thinking about what Jesus did. See, we were born into sin. And there needs to be someone that pays for that sin. Either we pay for, pay the price of that sin, or somebody else does it. And that's why we call it the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ. Jesus substituted himself for us. He took the penalty. He took the death penalty. Because the scripture tells us that because of sin, sin leads to death. And death needs to be paid because of sin. And Jesus paid that price by dying on the cross for us. That's the absolute truth. We Amen. can prove that not only through the Bible, that can be proved through history. Even people that weren't Christians wrote about Jesus and who he was and what he did, about his death, about his resurrection. And we don't even need the Bible to prove that. We can look at people like Josephus and and many others that were Greek historians that were not even Christians that wrote about this very truth. The point is, just like John 14, 6 says, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes unto the Father but through me. And, and that's the absolute truth. So God bless you as we think about Jesus today, and we think about his rising tomorrow. Yesterday, we celebrated his his death, I mean, the death on the cross, that he went to the cross and paid for our sins. And tomorrow we get to celebrate his rising, which brings us victory. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us, that you substituted 
yourself for us, that you paid the price of our sin. And not only that, but tomorrow we celebrate your rising, which is victory over death, that death can't, couldn't hold you down. Death couldn't keep you in the grave. And on that third day, you rose again, which is so reflective of us dying to our sin and rising to new life, as 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, where the old is gone and the new has come. We're so thankful for that. So thankful for your truth, Lord. I pray you bless each one today. Bless each one as we go into Easter tomorrow and we join together in churches all across, all over the face of this earth and celebrate your resurrection. Bless your people today as we do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Remember, keep looking up. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Have an incredible weekend. I just encourage you and exhort you to find a good church that preaches the word uncompromisingly and be in church tomorrow to worship and to fellowship with one another to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our victory and our hope. And God bless you. Have a great day. Have a happy Easter.